All right, folks. Rip the tank back out. Got our big plate. Our plan is to get this fuel tank done and get our floors finished so then our floors will be complete front to back. That is my goal. So anyways, I found my little chunk, my little chunk of aluminum outside. I don't know, it's a piece of channel, but this should be more than thick enough to do my flange. Like this thing is huge, but I think it'll be fine. It'll be good. So anyways, we got to cut basically this outer circle. I want to weld on, then I can make these little, these little tangs to which then when the tank is there, we, we should be okay. <laughs> we'll see. I don't know. I'm hoping I can do that because then, well, whatever, it'd be awesome and easy. Uh, I can't really do the steel in it. I don't think I can. Maybe if I cut this off, I can't. I don't know. We'll see what happens here. We're going to fumble. We're going to make it work. Worst case, I can just make it so that the ring screws down and holds the uh, center unit in. But we need to do one of these and we'll need to do a smaller one for the fuel gauge. That would be the plan. Um, and then I got to go back, revisit all my, my baffles. So these ones we're going to have to redo because they're not right. And I didn't dig into the other plate yet. So we're going to make new ones for the end caps. I have to shrink this up a little bit. It's a wee bit too wide. I think I'll take like three eighths of an inch or so off. That'll give it some breathing room between the frame rails. And then, um, we can make the caps. I'd like the caps to fold over and fit inside just so there's extra meat. So there's like less chance of places to crack, I guess. I don't know how much these tanks will or not, but as long as I put some good baffles in there that hold the top to the bottom, it shouldn't go anywhere. I guess we'll find out, right? Anyways, I think that's the plan. Uh, no time better than now to get started, I guess. <laughs> Alrighty, let's get going.
Well, my poor little MIG welder, she was uh, overheating and not having it. So uh, kind of hit the duty cycle on that little sucker. Like I say, it, it sucks my other welder. It doesn't have that uh, switch in it. Anyways, so basically went over it with the TIG. Like we kind of did that. A couple places I had some concerns. I just hit them up with the TIG welder underneath there. Uh, so the sides are done. I basically migged it and then I was a little on the fence about it. So I just walked the TIG over it just to remelt everything, I guess. And uh, I can see a pinhole right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, before I forget okay anyways I guess next step is I'm gonna plant my sump in here I think I'm gonna do my sump over on this side because this is where I put those baffles in this side I'm gonna run my fuel gauge that'll be that plan I kind of wanted to stick a second baffle in I don't know why I didn't do another one like the shield around it should be fine because of that pot but anyways, we're going to, now I'm going to whip up the plasma cutter. We're going to, I might just take this to the bandsaw so I can kind of get the shell of this thing right. Uh, won't be that important, but I could take it to the lathe after and clean it up. So I'll probably plasma the ring out as it should be. That way I can, uh, should I do it that way or should I just do a square? Maybe I'll do a square because then I can just weld it in like nicely I kind of want to do a hole but I think this might have to come up a bit because you can see this is how it would basically sit in the car and it'll probably work but I'm thinking I might have to square this thing out it's got to sit in this range back here I want it so this tank always has a flow to the back yeah I'm not sure it's either gonna be there or I'm gonna move it up the middle <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll figure it out as we go here. If I have to, I will carve a bigger hole in here and we can weld something and figure it out. But I'm just trying to think whether I should uh, leave a, a square chunk of that. So if I have to, I can angle it up and then just burn it in that way. And then put some sides on it in case we have to rise the whole thing or like bring it up. Anyways, we will... I'm going to quickly test fit this, see how I feel about it, and then from there we will start cutting that thing up. Well, this is the broken one, so this is just my test bed. <clears throat> so one of the rails was broken out of the top. Anyways, we opened this up and uh, I don't know, this is like, the rods were like yay long. We just, I ground the bottoms off so this thing can pop apart. So in the big picture, what's gonna happen is when I get a better system here, I can change this out to whatever fuel pump I need. And then this still has uh, like an anti-slosh, I guess is the right word. Like this will hold flu uh, fuel in here. So I don't have to worry about starving it for fuel. Uh, we'll cut these down. We'll cut the springs down because this thing needs to be quite a bit shorter. So this would be like 
probably what I need for the tank versus like where all this was out there. Anyways, we got that done. We did our ring. So my idea here is going to be we're going to stab this in there. Uh, I'll figure out a way which way it's got a point, but I don't think it really matters. And what I want to do in the end here, because I don't have these goofy rings, but I can either use this one, which I just might. I might just drill these and tap, uh, drill and tap this top pat so I can screw this lid down and we can sandwich it in. That said, we're using all stock GM stuff. So if I need a part or something on the road, all I know is I can go to a 99 Silverado and most of the parts will work without modification other than this thing. But these don't usually go bad. Usually you can just change the fuel filter. Uh, I don't know. It would have that and then it would have like my sanding unit for the, for the fuel, but I'm not gonna, I guess I could incorporate it on here, but I'm not too worried. I got a different sanding unit. I think I'll just use that because then it's more, this is more standard on vehicles to use something like this. Right, open it up. It comes with a gasket, so, oh, it's nice. Nice! We'll do that. We'll shorten it up. We'll kind of make it do its thing. That'll be so much easier. Then we'll just stick it on this side. It's kind of, I don't know. I guess I went off-centered a little bit or did something here, but... Anyways, like I say, we machined this and we're going to utilize the original rubber gasket that's in here, so... Like that. So, basically, we built it out of junk and uh, our fuel tank, well... We're not done yet. I'm gonna have to buy some steel. I need some strapping for the side so we can bolt it to the frame. I think straps would be better, honestly, but... Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm tossing the idea right now. <laughs> which, which will fail and screw me over in the long run here. All right, anyways, let's uh, get this mocked up and buzzed into the tank. I'll probably run this just through the saw because the plasma leaves like a super rough edge. But it does work. People always ask that. You can use a plasma cutter to thigh. I was using it about 40 amps. I don't know how thick this is. This thing's like, I don't know, 0.36. I would have to say, I don't know what that is in a fraction. But it's thick. <laughs>
Well, that is all really ugly. <laughs> I do got a nice one there. Check that out. This was not terrible. The upper part here worked out pretty good. This turned into a whole lot of booger. <laughs> ah well. I'm gonna have to pressure test it yet, but I still have to weld on some, what I wanna do with some tank straps, essentially. I wanna have a big piece of angle go across to which I can bolt to the bottom of the frame. And then on the back side, I like a piece of angle there that I can hook into the top of the frame. That would be ideal. So what we got here, here's our fill, our sending unit. We have to drill and tap that. We're gonna have to do the same up here, but this is gonna drop in a factory GM sending unit. But uh, I am done with welding for a bit. I gotta pick up some angle anyways, but as you can tell, there's aluminum dust everywhere. My workbench is a complete disaster. And uh, more over there. There is just as much aluminum shards in my coveralls and in my shirts and my shorts and everything else. So I am going in, changing, and I guess uh, we'll hit it back tomorrow when I can get some angle and then we'll get that sucker mounted in there and we can start with the floors, get the floors out of the way.
Well, now, I can guarantee you that sucked. That was an extreme amount of suck. Uh, we had a whack of pinholes. I ended up cutting this bar off, re-welding it, like fixing it, re-welding it back on. But in the end, it's done. So would I do it again? Not aluminum. I would have been way faster if I had built this thing out of steel. Oh, was that brutal? <laughs> yeah, like two days into this thing. Oh well, it's done. I'm gonna put it in the car, mount it, clamp it, do something for now so we can actually get started on the floors. I'm a uh, man. Did that suck a whole bunch? <laughs> I had to trim out so that little plate in the back. I'm gonna put it back in. It's, um, I think most of this inner junk in here is strictly for the spare tire thing. So I don't know if I'll leave it in or not. Maybe I'll take it out because we can put make our own bracing in there after just to support the back of the car here better. Uh, plus we can get in and bang some of this stuff out, which would be pretty nice. Um, Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, all right, let's get that thing in there. And uh, then we'll start building our floor around it. I, uh, I still got to put a couple pieces of strap across the top here, but that is no big deal. That'll take two seconds to do. Then, uh, man, do I do that? Maybe I don't do the top yet. I still want to do that one brace. And then I think we're going to have to make a brace somewhere in the back because the back of the car is not fastened. Right now we only have... A body mount right here. I'd like to have one right there and then I'd like to have one more in the back. So yeah, let's put the tank in. No, let's put the tank, yeah. <laughs> let's put the tank in and let's frame something up in there. That's what we're gonna do.
Well, folks, I think that is as far as I am getting tonight. Oh, yeah. That thing kicked my butt. That fuel tank did, anyway. <laughs> I, uh, well, we got the panel done. It's zapped in. It's, uh, we're getting there. I was hoping to get this part all patched up, but it's just not looking like it's going to happen. Which, whatever, is fine. But it's all sitting in there nice. I actually removed the inner structure, and I think when I redo this, there's enough room to hide my air tank back here. Though I can't pull this out from inside, but that's not a big deal. We can drop the tank easily enough. But I think I can tuck that there and kind of get my compressors to the side or something. I think it'll work out. I think overall what'll happen is this, this trunk will end up being a little bulgy right here, but we can hide all the air tank stuff, which would be a win. Um, doo -doo -doo. What else we got? Yeah, I don't know. This tank totally kicked my butt. That's all I can tell you. It sucked a lot. <laughs> I am pooped and I am gonna go inside now. Anyways, unfortunately I didn't get as far as I wanted, but hey, it's a little bit of progress anyways, right? So, I, uh, I guess that's where we're gonna leave this one. I know next round I want to do the floor pan, but I believe it's going to be more work than I think because it's going to entail into this part, which is pretty buggered, so it might make more sense just to make this piece new. And uh, how can I get some exhaust pipe? Because I think I need some two inch or something because wherever the roundness of the fender is, I want to make a round exhaust pipe kind of flow around here, fender to fender. Not really to connect them, but I just want them to go side to side so I have a nice transition for this to roll under. At least that's my thought. Well, anyways, like I said, I want to thank you folks for watching. And uh, we will catch you on the next one. Later.